Yeah. It's turning the microwave on. A microwave. <laughs> <laughs> microwave as well as the microphone. Say I'm one of the coffee. Good morning, councillors, CEO, directors, ladies and gentlemen. The traditional custodians, the Uiburra people, the land on which we're privileged to call our home, represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations as part of one of the oldest living cultures on the planet. We pay our respects to the Indigenous elders, past and present, and recognise their continuing connection to our land and our community. I just have to uh, draw the attention of the public gallery to the right hand upper corner of the screen in terms of our notice to you that this council meeting is videoed and audio recorded, and the live stream uh, happens on our council's website in, in conjunction with our council standing orders. Everybody who attends here today are consenting that your image, your voice and your comments are going to be recorded and published. Thank you very much, councillors. Declare the meeting open for today, the twenty-fourth. <coughs> the nineteenth on my on my briefing schedule. It's just thrown into thrown in. Twenty-fourth of uh, July. And uh, thank you for your attendance. We have um, our opening prayer today, Captain Stephen Spencer, and Lydia is here as well. So, Captain Stephen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Shall we pray? Merciful God, as elected officials, these men and women are the voices and the faces of the Mackay community. These people meet here today to do the work of the people for this community. I therefore charge each one to fulfil their purpose on this council and to act with due diligence. I pray a prayer of blessing on each person's staff and on their respective families. I echo the words of the disciple Peter, and quote, as each person draws upon their own position of leadership within this scripture. Now as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. <coughs> And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Mm -hmm. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. Mm -hmm. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, Captain Spencer. Councillors, we're going to be absent on um, council business. We have a couple of apologies today. Um, two motions required. Councillor Cam can't be with us today. Would somebody like to uh, move the leave of absence be granted? Councillor Mann moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Councillor May is also uh, absent for today's meeting and asks to be uh, granted leave of absence. Councillor Casey moves. Councillor Englert seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Are there any condolences? Councillor Englert. Thank you, Worship. Um, on Friday, I attended the funeral of Eric Jackson, a member of our Kalen community. Um, the reason I mention him is I knew him through his 14 years of service to our communities in the State of Emergency Service. Um, he's, uh, he's a volunteer in everything else in his community in Kalen as well, but predominantly I know him from the SES. Um, in his 70s, so he passed away at 80. In his 70s, he beat leukaemia and came back to the SES after that, which was a testament to his, his commitment to his communities. Um, he, um, 
he he had a he was a, he was a quiet and 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 gentle man, but he was um, he was a bit of a bush poet. Um, he he was a, one of the he was the glue of of the group at at Kalen Group, and um, he's very sorely missed. One of the challenges we had with him, he he came to the Mackay region uh, when he was four. His father was old school cane cutter, and so he was involved in the. In, in, in farming for his entire life, only once leaving Mackay for a trip to Sydney. Um, but the challenge <laughs> originally was that uh, to convince uh, Eric that um, in, in the way of the world was that at SES training it was probably a good thing to wear your boots. So it, it, was, uh, it, took, it was some challenge for a period of time to get him to come around to the fact that wearing boots in SES was a requirement. And um, as, as he got more used to that, you'd find his vehicle parked closer and closer to the SES headquarters uh, so that he could um, put his boots on in the car, walk the three steps to training and then have not much distance to walk to remove them immediately after. Um, it, his, his funeral was um, attended um, by a lot of the Kalen community. There was a uh, standing room only out at, at uh, Mount Bassett. And uh, there's community interest in, um, in remembering him uh, in, in naming uh, Boulder Creek Park in the Kayla area, and I'll talk to the, I'll pass those wishes on to the CEO at the end of this meeting. Thank you very much, Councillor Inglot. Well said. Any further condolences to be delivered? Thanks, Councillors. Conflicts of interest. Councillor Walker has uh, declared a perceived conflicts in 17.1. Any other conflicts? No other conflicts? Let's move on then. The confirmation of the ordinary minutes. Well, the meeting of the 10th of July have been circulated. Uh, somebody would like to move that they be adopted. Councillor Casey, Councillor Mann seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. No business arising out of them. There's no mayoral minutes. Let's move on to the consideration of committee reports and recommendations. <coughs> 10 one is the draft minutes of the Sport and Recreation Advisory Committee. Are there any questions associated with this? Would somebody would like to move this adoption? Councillor Payton, Councillor Englert seconds. Councillor Payton. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Sport and Rec Advisory Committee meeting was held on the 12th of June with uh, good attendance this time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jeannie Donald has stepped down from the committee uh, due to ongoing commitments and you know how busy Jeannie is in the, in the sporting groups. Uh, I'd also I'd like to acknowledge uh, Jeannie's involvement with many sporting uh, clubs and committee groups uh, within the region. Uh, Graham Hawes uh, came along and gave a presentation on the uh, region cycle uh, pathway network and explained the priority system to the, uh, com to the committee and also the up and coming projects uh, that we have throughout the region. Uh, Mick uh, St. Clair, he gave a presentation on the mountain bike uh, strategy uh, the plan and the actions that are, that are coming out of that strategy and basically where we're up to with the project. Tiana Cousins uh, also did a presentation to the committee uh, on the Mackay Region Events Strategy and the process that Council's going through at the moment, you know, to collate all the information in one document. Uh, the committee have also uh, reviewed the terms of reference, which is you know on the agenda. Uh, there is a, a couple of minor changes that was recommended for the council's endorsement. Thank you very much, Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Any other speakers? And the motion is that uh, the minutes be adopted or received, and the terms of reference be endorsed. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. Thank you. Ten point two. The draft and meeting minutes of the Character and Heritage Advisory Committee of the 14th of June. Are there any questions associated with this? Somebody would like to move. Councillor Mann moves. Councillor Anglet seconds. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, look, we had a very full meeting on the 14th of June and we actually ran out of time, so some items have had to be carried up to the next meeting. And it's really good to see the buy in from our committee members, just so that we're discussing more and more things all the time. So one of the things we, looked, we, we did was to welcome the new museums coordinator, Alicia Stevenson, to her first meeting. Um, Alicia has well and surely hit the ground running and um, she, her knowledge and I guess just the person she is has been really well accepted by the museum volunteers, which is really good to see as well. Um, we discussed maintenance requirements for Greenmount Homestead, including the condition of outbuildings and the need for urgent repairs and ongoing scheduled maintenance program in the future. That's really, really important given that's a heritage listed um, facility. Um, it, is, uh, it is noted there's no conservation management plan for Greenmount 
So um, we need to, to work on um, steps to work that out. Um, and uh, that will then guide prioritisation of repairs, works and future funding opportunities as well. Um, the committee also noted the assistance of Friends of Greenmount while, before Alicia started and the um, information and um, assistance they provided to the, to the committee. Um, the Friends of Greenmount also gave an update on future events, so they're really, really looking at react or activating Greenmount for different events, and I think that's going really well and it's being well accepted by the community as well. Um, our senior co uh, co coordinator of community programs, Robert Ryan, gave an update on the review of the Cultural Heritage Act. Um, it was discussed that the review event wasn't well advertised, so a lot of people didn't know, but committee members were offered the opportunity of receiving the review paper and feedback form if they wished to. So I'm not sure if anybody took up that offer. Nominations for National Trust Queensland Awards opened on the 10th of June and closed on, the, on August 5, and the committee was asked to um, discuss potential nominations and were also asked to submit further ideas for nominations. So we're hoping that we get some nominations in, in the um, National Trust Awards. Um, Nicholas McDougall gave an update on the program for the upcoming Museums and Gallery Conference that Councillor May and I are attending. Um, as well as council staff that are attending as well. Nicholas was asked to be part of the organising committee, which was really um, a nod to his knowledge. Um, officers presented the findings of the Armistice War Memorial Centenary Project Summer, Summer Report, which was prepared by Urbis and is included in today's agenda. The report finds that there's 19 places considered to meet criteria of locally significant places in this region. It is also noted that Mackay Memorial Swimming Centre meets five out of eight criteria for local heritage listing, including historical, architectural, aesthetic, social and associational significance. Um, officers are considering the feasibility of a conservation management plan for Serena Air Raid Shelter and an initial meeting of stakeholders will be held soon. And the Heritage Trail workshops were held recently and all councillors were invited to attend and to participate and give their input. It was really pleasing to see how many people did actually attend those workshops and the community and especially the museums, Kermine Museums Committee and the Character and Heritage Committee gave freely of what they would like to see in a heritage trail um, within our region. Um, so there's several actions of particular note and recommendations from the committee. Um, given the popularity of Greenmount After Dark Tours, it was suggested that um, Character and Heritage Advisory Crew Committee members and other staff council members uh, consider attending in the future. The need for a conservation management plan for Greenmount Homestead be considered after Serena Air Raid Shelter Conservation Management Plan has been investigated so that we understand resources and costs involved. Um, I'm happy to move that the draft Character and Heritage Advisory Committee minutes, minutes from 14th of June received and further as per officer's rec recommendation that the <coughs> War Memorial Centenary Project Summary Report be received and recommendations be considered as part of Council's wider priority and ongoing costs and maintenance requirements. Okay, thank you very much. Speaker against? Any other speakers? So the motion is that... Uh, the minutes be received and that the Armistice War Memorial, as you heard there, be received and the recommendations be considered as part of Council's wider priorities. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Draft minutes of the Traffic Advisory Committee of the 28th of June. Are there questions surrounding this one? Moved by Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Bonaventure. Councillor Casey. Yeah, thank you, Worship. <coughs> the uh, minutes are pretty clear there, but one thing I wouldn't bring your attention to is the TMR have done a speed limit review of um, Serena, uh, Serena Beach Road from Bells Creek out to Campen Beach. And with uh, more and more people uh, starting to enter that road, the 100k zone has been deemed to be a little bit uh, dangerous. So they're going to reduce it down to 80k's. So uh, there will be uh, further advice about that. It has to go to the Speed Limit Review Committee, uh, get signed off by police, TMR and our council itself. So that'd be one thing that's gonna come. Thanks, Councillor Casey. Speaker against, any other speakers? Councillor Bella. Um, just following on from what Councillor Casey said, I'm actually very, very pleased to hear that. The road has been problematic for quite a while and I think, uh, well, I would welcome any uh, reduction in the speed limit and adequate policing to see that it is abided by. Thanks, Councillor Bella. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion that's uh, the recommendation is that it be adopted. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. 10.4. <coughs> Uh, 
The Sustainability and Environment Advisory Committee. Are there any, uh, that's the minutes being circulated. Any questions? No questions? So we'd like to move its adoption. Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Mann. I'll just hold on a few things that I read in the minutes anyway. I wasn't there, but councillors may and Kim are away and they are the councillors uh, for that committee. Um, the minutes reflect a full meeting agenda, including updates provided on a number of outstanding action items, including a bushfire recovery update by Councillor Cam. Um, according to the minutes, Councillor Cam provided details on the, on the recovery subgroup meetings and noted success in obtaining funding for a two-year project assisting private landholders and rural fire brigades to produce fire management plans, which is, which is really important as well. There was discussion around grants submitted, and I noticed... Um, the minutes indicate there was discussion around funding that MRC is applying for under Queensland Government Recreational Fishing Grants, total of $100,000 available statewide for hosting fishing clinics, research and improving fish ha habitats, amongst other things. Um, Council's manager, Richard Brown, provided an overview of coastal work projects and coast local coastal plan prioritisation process, process and system, which will be used to guide planning and investment for coastal projects. Councillor May has spoken previously on this process and has commended officers for their work in this regard. Um, in the absence of councillors, Cam and May, I'm happy to recommend that the minutes of the Sustainability and Environment Advisory Committee meeting held on 28th of June be received. Thank you very much. Councillor Mann, speaker against. <coughs> Any other speakers? I'll put the motion, those in favour. Any against? The motion's carried. Move on to correspondence and officers' reports now, 11.1. And this is the attendance of councillors at the Queensland Tourism Awards and Destination Forum of 2019. And Councillor May and Councillor G have been recommended to attend that forum. Any questions? Somebody would like to move? Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Mann, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Number point two is the attendance of uh, councillors at the 2019 Australian Local Government Women's Association Leadership Forum. Uh, that Councillor Cam, Councillor Mann, Councillor May uh, to attend that forum. Any questions? Somebody would like to move? Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Councillor Payton. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Attendance of councillors at the LGAQ 2019 Waste Forum. And Councillor Payton, uh, Payton has uh, indicated an interest in this forum. Would. Uh, and that's what I think that's our uh, this, that's our motion. But Councillor Payton, Payton be the attendee. Councillor Casey moves. Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Councillor Casey, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Let's move on to eleven point four. It's a capital works review for June uh, to find finalise the year. See ya. Uh, thank you, Worship. Good morning, councillors. Uh, very pleasing, no LTIs or serious injuries in the capital department for the year and for June. For the month of June, 13.6 million in capital works were completed, uh, so 94.1% achieved against the amended budget for the year. Should be noted though, there was a $14.3 million variance between the uh, amended budget and the original, the, sorry, the original budget. And on that, there was 4.5 million of project savings, which is a positive. Um, there was 1.6 million of donated assets that didn't eventuate, which is outside of Council's control. The ones that were in our control is 1.1 million of plant equipment not delivered in the year. So we've ordered that equipment, it just didn't get delivered in time. And there is, uh, and then the, the remaining five odd million, which is around 5% of the total spend, was project expansion not achieved. So that's the stuff that we've got to work on. Uh, but overall, very positive result. Uh, the Morani Liquid Stream upgrade, which is our largest <coughs> project in this current year, is um, off and running. Great to see Barber Park upgrades are complete and Camilleri's Park, you'll notice, uh, hopefully you'll notice we've started work there on stage one. And uh, the Queen's Park upgrade, uh, you would have noticed the Food and Wine Festival had started work on that $9 million upgrade as well. Thanks to the CEO. 94.1% great result. Absolutely outstanding and uh, can only get better from here. So are there questions? There's no bite. So uh, are there questions? Councillor G. Barber well, Park looks great. Um, on the council's web Facebook launch, there was a few comments around the safety of the play equipment that's shown on page 83. Uh, the common theme was a drop from the slide to the sand and the reach from the mesh to the bucket above it. So uh, do these things get tracked and do we respond to the parents once the kids actually get used to it? 
Okay. Thanks, Councillor G. See you. I will chase it up. I can guarantee that all our equipment's put in under the Australian standard. Um, that's absolutely checked. So yeah. any distance that would be to the Australian oh. standard. Um, that said, I've been personally involved outside of this business with ones that are Australian standard that still have an issue. So we'll just chase that up and make sure we respond. But I can guarantee that we put into the Australian standard. Yeah, it was a uh, common theme yeah. from a yeah. few different people. We'll chase yeah, that yes, up. Yes, I, I have noticed Camilleri Streets Park. There's about a metre of compressed soil there ready for shaping. Thanks, Councillor G. Other questions, Councillor Bonaventura? Uh, just your worship, on page 80, I note that uh, Coningsby School will access road to their drop-off zone. Um, has been, uh, the, the tender contract has gone out. Um, could I just get a little bit more, a bit of detail as to what, what actually is being done in that area? I know the school has been chasing this for quite a while, so. So, yeah, can you answer? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Robert. The works are actually complete. Um, so there's been formalisation of the curb and parking, new footpath, signage, so the whole area's been upgraded um, for that amount of money, so it's actually complete. And a little bit of internal drainage on that. Inside. I'm not sure about the drainage. I know the the, form, the footpath was all part of that footpath program, and then while we're there, the curb and everything was sorted out, and signage. Yeah. In consultation yeah. with the, the curb was done. It's probably included yeah. that inside drainage. Yeah, so it's all done as part of that program. If I could have just a little someone could send you a little something as the plan or what was done would be great. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Councillor Bonaventure. Further questions. So we'd like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Englert seconds. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the Capital Works Department has been a great success within the first financial year of it being introduced. So uh, mm -hmm. congratulations to all involved uh, with the change management there. Uh, delivering a $122.2 million for projects for the year across the entire region and a staggering, well, I found a 97.1% uh, completion rate, but that depends on which uh, budget you look at. Uh, I'd also like to uh, commend the team on what they have delivered under this new directorate, uh, you know, with Stuart uh, Finesse at the helm. And we'd like to welcome our uh, new director, Jim Carlis, uh, as the new director for Capital Works. Congratulations on your appointment, Jim. And we look forward to seeing 98% completion next year. <laughs> Set the bar very high, Councillor Payton. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Are there speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Casey speaking for? Yes, Your Honour. Certainly, Your Worship. Uh, as you know, I've been around the Council here for a few seasons now, and uh, this is probably the best report we've had with it. Uh, we've been around 80, 85, and lots of different reasons, different excuses, and stuff like that. But the creation of this uh, capital director, uh, yeah. I've got to give credit to the CEO for that and for the staff that he appointed and the staff underneath. They've done a fantastic job. And Jim, there is no pressure. Much. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Casey. Any other speakers? And uh, before I put that motion to accept uh, this report, uh, yes, can we record our uh, welcome to our new director, Jim Carlis? And uh, it's, as you can see, we're very interested from a councillor's perspective on the, uh, the outcome of this directorate. And there really is no pressure, but not a sense of good aiming point, I think. <laughs> so I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. 11.5 is the Engineering Commercial Infrastructure Water Services Monthly Review for June. CEO. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, very, very pleasing. No lost time injuries recorded for June or for the four year for this department. I think that's an excellent result in a high risk area and a credit to the director and the staff in that directorate. Uh, annual targets were exceeded for trade waste approvals and audits completed and the total My Water registrations also exceeded our target. Um, we continue with our, the transfer of the um, Mackay North and Mackay South recycling facilities has been transferred to Council from the 1st of July and the team's running well. We're still doing some high level negotiations with Down or on, on just some, uh, some asset stuff that we need to sort out. Overall the department was favourable to budget mainly on the back of increased water revenue. Um, and all major capital projects in this uh, particular apartment were completed within the, within for the year and the new laboratory official opening has been set for the 19th of August, I believe. Thank you very much. Questions for the CEO? Councillor Bonaventure. Oh, page 104, <coughs> Worship, I note uh, non-residential customers take an extra five days on average to have their identified um, leaks repaired. So these are commercial problems. The report also states that due to the size and complexity of the property, some leaks are difficult to isolate, which I absolutely agree with. The question is, do we have the same uh, 10 litres per hour trigger um, or do we increase this on larger commercial properties? Because they could have you know, heaps of toilets and tap fittings. and mm. So, you know, 
Good question. I don't see you. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I get it right. I'll, the information I've been provided by the directors, we do use that 10 litres um, for everybody. Um, it might be something we need to look at for for, for bigger organisations. I'm not sure how the My Water process works for that. Director? Uh, yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, it would depend, I think, Councillor, on how many commercial properties are signed up to My H2O. So obviously, if you're not signed up, there's a delay in the advice that gets issued. You can only do the end of the month letters. So, and then as you've indicated, um, commercial business can be a bit more complex to find uh, minor leaks. So we might have a look at some of the data and just have a look at the split between our non-res and res who signed up. Mainly it's been residential customers signed up and they obviously automatically get the notification on any leak. Mm -hmm. I suppose you wish I've been going along that point because if you're a, a larger business and you get a letter saying, oh, you've got you know, 12 litres per hour leak, when they're using a bulk amount of water. I, I, I think, think they probably go, oh, it's not worth chasing, you know, by the time we, we do that. I just, I don't want to put our system down by just going, well, we've sent all these letters out and people are sort of going, oh, well, not, not going to worry about it. I, I just like a bit of, if we could work on that a little bit. To you, man, we don't, we don't make the decision on what decision the customer makes, we just provide the advice and then they obviously Point make a decision. So the issue is if we weren't doing that and have a leak, then we're going to get saying, well, you had the information, you had it available, you didn't make it available to us. So we just make the position that once we get to a 10 litres a second, we'll issue out the advice. Uh, we'll try and work with the customers and, and help them out, but ultimately it's out to our customers to actually take that advice and do something with it. Thank you very much. Further questions? Somebody would like to, you have a, you have a question? Uh, yes, another one, Your Worship. Um, just on our wastewater compliance draft, uh, Which one is that? Uh, page 112. <clears throat> on that, I noticed that um, there's about a 40% reduction in the samples for June. And I just wanted to know, was there a particular reason for that? And the second part of that question is, do we have a minimum number of tests that must be performed on a monthly basis CEO. to meet our criteria? Yeah, thank you, Council Monitor. The first one is there's no minimum, but it's on an eight-day reoccurring cycle for all tests. And the reason it's down is on the eight-day cycle when the report was written, the sample results for one set of eight hadn't been received, so it would have been received now. So it'll be corrected for. So we'll so, see a boost yeah. in the so next So it's just a timing issue on that. Um, so we're on an eight-day reoccurring cycle that's it's got to be done. Right. right. And just, Your Worship, just one more, if I may, in relation to the My H2O, and uh, Council Bella did very well as far as getting above the, uh, the number. Have we set a new... Uh, number of um, registrations for my H2O to give Councillor Bella something to aim yeah. for? Uh, it's a good question, Councillor Bonaventura. So we're just about to work through with our staff on setting all those targets for our next month's month. report. Um, so we'll make sure it's not easy. I look forward to it. We'll make sure it's not <laughs> easy. Thank you. I'd right, so say other further questions. Yes, I do. Um, I would like to know if you're looking into that, whether there was, you know, we could look at <clears throat> areas that we could focus on that might actually bring in uh, more registrations, whether there was, you know, more registrations in certain areas, less in others, you know, just to see if there's any any sort of indicator as to how we could sort of facilitate registrations just rather than the blanket approach. So, yeah, yeah. a good idea. We can have the data and see where... <laughs> Um, Murphy's law says the data will be, there's always about the same number in each street, but well, yeah, you're right, it's a good point. We'll, make, we'll have a look at the data and see if we can have targeted campaigns rather than general campaigns. Because then I can go to those streets. And... Thank you, Councillor. Okay, thank so you. thank you, Councillors. Uh, any further questions? Somebody would like to move then to the officer's recommendation to be adopted? Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor G. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, look, I, I seem to mention every time I speak to a report, um, but I feel it's important to highlight, and that's no lost time to injury for a 12-month period in a high-risk area of counselling. That's outst an outstanding result. And I think all staff need to be congratulated for contributing to this result. I think it shows a real commitment from everyone in, in the business to ensure we work as safely as possible. Um, I was also really pleased to see we had officers attend different events with a view to improving, in some cases, sharing knowledge. And I think that's always really important as we look to what we can do as a business, but also to share what we've learned with other businesses as well. Um, one event was investigating methods to, to reduce discharges to the reef and to improve water quality, which is very important. And the other was our officers presenting learnings from water services asset management journey again, which is something really important. 
Um, there was 322 wave orders raised during the month for both water and sewer, and it was fantastic to see 93% were completed within the target time frame. Um, given that tasks are sometimes more complex than what's first logged, I think that's an outstanding result, and staff should be congratulated for their completion rate achieved. 62 plumbing applications received and all were approved within a two-day turnaround. Again, another outstanding result, given the target is five-day turnaround. Um, 26,000 tests performed by our lab during June, and I note that we completed an analysis of samples from Possipine and Cannonvale wastewater treatment plants for Whitsunday Regional Council. So that was a first as well, and that's something that's really important. Um, we've already touched on the new registrations by H2O, so hopefully there is a bigger target set for the coming year. And something that's very dear to me, very, something I'm very proud of, is the completion of the Slave Point Water Tower mural. Uh, that it was a collaboration between multiple um, programs and teams in council, and it was an outstanding result, and the engagement from the community has been overwhelmingly positive. So congratulations to everybody, and <coughs> some outstanding achievements. Thank you very much. Councillor Mann, speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventure you're speaking for, obviously. For the motion, you wish. Uh, just like uh, put on record uh, my thanks to staff for their efforts in fixing the leak at the corner of uh, Victoria and Sydney streets. Um, it was sort of very hectic there for a while when that thing let go very early in the morning. And I just was very impressed, uh, so was the local community, because I dropped in and saw a few people in that vicinity with the, uh, the communication from staff to their businesses and how they assisted um, in getting the job done as, as, as good as possible in as short a possible time. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Any other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Um, Councillor Bellow, you? I'm in favour. I'm sorry, right, okay. It's uh, carried unanimously. Thank you very much. 11.6 is the ECI Waste Services. Monthly Review CEO. Thank you. Again, very positive safety performance for the department. Uh, has been for some time, set, set the standard. Uh, the introduction of the new state waste levy occurred on the 1st of July and has gone well from an operations point of view and all the plans that have been put in place from our side of it have, have been put in place. Obviously, we didn't bring the levy in, but we had to prepare for it. Um, I'm pleased to advise, it only came through last night, that uh, Mackay Regional Council was awarded the National 2019 Ag Safe Stewardship Award. It's a national award for the Drum Master Initiative. Uh, so that was one, so it's a credit to the, the staff who've been involved in that. Uh, that was only new off, uh, hot off the press. Uh, you would have seen that the total charitable organisations for waste have spent a little bit less than the 55,000 allocated. There was a couple there that uh, hit, their, hit their target. Uh, I do believe an email was sent around by the director in the last week or so around uh, Lifeline. We've been talking for some time about some rationalisation and the number of bins have been rationalised back. So hopefully that will assist them going forward this year with the management of their, um, of their number. Um, the department was very favourable to budget on back of increased gate fees for the year and that's predominantly on the back of uh, more waste was collected and then tra subsequently transferred to Holdings Pocket for the year. Questions for the CEO? Um, Councillor Bollinger. Just on those tonnages to Hogan's Pocket, Your Worship, uh, is there a table for the um, 18 19 financial year, which is the one we just finished, and if I could have a comparison to the 17 18 financial year, please? Certainly, CEO. Something I prepared earlier, Councillor. Um, 17 18 was 80,797 tonnes and 80.82. I'll just do rounding if that's all right. Thank you. 1819 was 85,004, so it was an increase of about six or seven percent. Do you want the green waste tonnes as well? If I could, yes, please. 1718 was 5,012 tonnes, and 1819 was 4,755 tonnes of reduction. Thank you. Further questions for the CEO? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption? Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Casey. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. It was a very good report. And that's a department always seems to work pretty well, even though they are involved in waste. They certainly do a great job, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura speaking for. Yes, Your Worship. Just in relation to the uh, the waste tonnages, actually, and, and I noticed there was a small spike in uh, in the tonnage delivered to Hogan's Pocket for June, and there was also an increase in dump voucher usage. So we're told. Uh, my initial thoughts was. You know, um, customers were anticipating a waste levy and have sort of gone in there. So I, I like on record to look. I'll look forward to the July figure to see whether there is a drop, um, and that would indicate that they did do that. But overall, I was uh, I'm quite pleased the spike wasn't as big as I thought it was. I thought we might have got a big influx in June, 
of um, waste as people tried to make sure they got rid of whatever they could prior to um, the seventy dollar a ton or seventy five dollar a ton waste levy coming. Thanks, Councillor Bonaventura. Any other speakers? Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaking for? Uh, for, yeah. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate the waste team. Uh, five years of no lost time injuries. It's great effort and shows that uh, safety is definitely embedded into everything that this team does. Uh, the other thing I'd like to congratulate them on, as uh, our CEO has said, is the work of the non-profit organisations to reduce their need for waivers, uh, for fee waivers, sorry, uh, and you know to bring that uh, expenditure in under budget, and also just acknowledge the preparations that the team have done around the uh, waste levy with the upgrades at the Hogan Pocket Way Bridge and significant work around the software support system uh, just to ensure that everything you know, transitions over smoothly. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot happening in the waste area and the team is ensuring our council is meeting the mark. Thank you very much. Councillor Baden, Councillor Bell, speaking for. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, focus on the um, the dump vouchers here. Um, <coughs> dumping is always a bit problematic with our general public. Uh, Council Bonaventura and myself have attended a couple of meetings in the past uh, couple of months with the community um, to explain the um, the ins and outs of the dumping <coughs> program. Um, the vouchers, once explained to people are actually very well received. As a matter of fact, uh, both myself and uh, my two daughters having uh, premises in the region, um, in speaking to them, and, and from my own experience, I can't remember the last time I had to actually pay to dump. So judicious using of your vouchers um, should cover most dumping for most people. Um, it's also good to see that um, that the staff, especially Jason Grandcourt, um, were able to give us basically the layman's um, lowdown on the whole overview of the dumping process. And it made it very, very simple to explain to those community members all the ins and outs, the fact that dumping can never be free. Uh, if it is free, um, someone always pays. And, and I must say that... Um, reasonable people when, when things are explained to them in that sort of clarity do go away pretty pleased. So I'd like to commend um, whoever, and I think it may well have been Council Bonaventura and a couple of others that sit at this table, uh, instigated the uh, voucher program because I think it's an exceptional program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bella. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion in. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. ECI Transport and Drainage Monthly Review for June CEO. Uh, thank you. Again, um, there was one LTI in this department, but that was last August, so touch wood, we're coming up nearly 12 months and again in a high-risk area of the council, so that's also an excellent result. Um, the low-cost bitumen seal has been completed on Connors Road with very positive feedback, and we'll monitor that closely. Uh, the Wallen Street drainage maintenance work has been undertaken, um, which was a, an item that came out of a, a council and community day and was on our list. The Clues Road floodway and fishway project has been completed. Uh, I know it's been mentioned by a couple of councillors here in the last couple of months, but... Uh, I think our road networks, our sealed and unsealed program just gets better and better and the performance of our roads after rain everything is, is standing up. So um, I, think, I think that's been an excellent result for what's being invested in and how it's being delivered. Uh, again, uh, we were just advised uh, a letter to you, Your Worship, yesterday from the state that we have been successful in our funding for $1.64 million for our bikeway uh, under the state prop network program. It wasn't our budget, but we got approval for that uh, in the last 24 hours. So. That's the, uh, if you remember, the Pioneer River North Bank Shared Path, Stage 1. So that'll be another fantastic ex, uh, addition to our bikeway and shared path. So we'll get another job to do. And our bridge maintenance program has continued pretty sort of behind the scenes during 1819, but has gone very well. And the Walker Finn Road Bridge was the latest one to get a birthday in June. Thanks, CEO. You know, it's good news about that 1.6 million that uh, the uh, Minister has advised. <coughs> Questions for the CEO? Any questions? Somebody would like to move the reports and option, please. Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Walker. Councillor Casey. Thank you, Your Worship. Another great report and another great uh, month of uh, effort by our staff. Um, with regard to uh, Connors Road, the seal down there, excellent. I've been for a drive up and down there a couple of times and after up and down there a few times with the, the uh, gravel. It's a great improvement and 
one of my friends down the end of the road, she's quite happy to. Um, if you have a look at the, gra at the uh, report itself, just um, the total number of kilometres graded and maintenance. You know, your gravel completed year to date, 23,000 kilometres. Mm. It's a hell of a, hell of a report. Great, uh, great effort has been done by all the staff. Yes, we've had some pretty good weather to be able to do it, but um, we've had our downtime as well there with the rains and that earlier in the year, but the staff worked tremendously well. And when you have a look at those figures and people sit back and say, nothing ever gets done in my area. Bloody impossible when you have a look at those figures. But uh, congratulations to all. Thank you very much, Councillor Casey. Other speakers, Speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura, Speaker Paul. For the motion, Your Worship. Look, I'd just like to follow on from uh, Councillor Casey um, in relation to the unsealed road. Um, and I'm sure Councillor Bella mentioned it at the last meeting. But um, I've got to say, Councillor Bella and I were at uh, a couple, well, only a week ago, at a grants writing meeting. And it came up there where one of the, uh, the, the attendees commented on how good the gravel road was and how they were having an event down there and council had upgraded the road and the formation was great and there was nothing but praise and it gives you a good feeling to be there at times like that so that's that's a positive the only other comment i'd like to make is uh, uh, the clues road job has now been completed and there was a lot of issue up there and also uh, received very positive comments from two of the landholders up there uh, in relation to that uh, and if time uh, permits, Your Worship, on our uh, Council and Community Day, I intend to take councillors up there to have a look at the completed job. So Very good. it should be good. Thanks, Councillor Bonaventura. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. So let's move on. 11.8 is the Org Services Monthly Review for June, CEO. Thank you. Um, Broken record a little bit. Great performance and safety in this department again. Uh, we're upgrading our three year safety strategy in action. We've brought it back. <coughs> that's a moving feast where we are. Um, we will update it, challenge ourselves with the KPIs. That strategy has been updated again. Uh, just a bit of a note, and I know we've got very positive feedback from the councillors, but the business process management framework that we've introduced into this mm. council in the last year has attracted attention from some of the larger councils in Queensland as a bit of a benchmark practice. So I think that's a credit to the staff who've been involved in that. Great credit. Uh, you will notice our greater service, KPI and shared services was down in June. Um, and that was mainly on the back of some uh, sickness and some resource issues, but we're very confident we'll have corrected that in July. Uh, I'd just like to make a mention as well for the KPI results for IT. Um, there has been a recovery there. It's been a department that's um, it's a very, very busy, some of the cyber security stuff that's happening mm. on a live basis and they've handled it very well and protected our business and, and delivered on capital and everything else. The KPI's been a little bit down, but I just think it should be noted that what, what a great job they've done. And the financial performance for this department was favourable to budget for the year. Excellent. Thank you very much, CEO. Questions for the CEO? No questions. Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, again, I'll mention safety, so no LTIs for June or for a 12-month period. For all services, again, uh, an area that does some high-risk activities, so congratulations to all for workplace health and safety culture and commitment. Um, I noticed there was a wide range of safety, uh, safety activities completed in June on, on the back of, guess, what we're trying to develop, and again, highlighting the commitment of the business to ensure our employees are able to complete their work as safely as possible. So some of those activities were a review of work, workplace health and safety procedures, workplace health and safety team member attending a legal conference, and I think that's, um, that's fantastic to utilise every learning opportunity we can. Um, and fit testing of particular PPE to ensure that it's correct, to, to ensure it's correct use. Um, pools that were open were well utilised during June despite some cooler weather, and the marks saw good athletic and uh, aquatic attendances as well, so that was really good to see. Um, I do wish to thank our frontline staff in shared services for the service they deliver to this council and community every day. They often have a thankless job um, and they need to have an extraordinary amount of knowledge about the business to be able to answer questions um, on a variety of calls received. They deliver for us every single day. I note June has seen some challenges with staff levels, but an average of 416 calls per day were received with an average speed to answer each call of just under two minutes. So I think that's pretty well outstanding Great. given we've had the challenges we have. I also wanted to highlight what our IT staff have achieved. They've also had challenges with staffing levels, but application of availability has remained at over 100% and overall customer satisfaction at 97%. So I think those results still speak for themselves as well. 
Um, paper and culture do, can you continue to deliver development opportunities and support and mechanisms to our staff with a variety of programs including inclusive leadership, leadership development, volunteer management and mentoring network program in conjunction with RIM. Again, I think these programs assist our staff to realise their full potential in regard to career aspirations and goals and career progression. And the te this team have implement implemented so many supports in the last three and a bit years. Um, I think it's a very busy month. It was a very, very busy month for all programs and I asked the director to pass on our thanks to all her team and our acknowledgement of their efforts in some quite challenging circumstances. Thanks, Councillor Mann. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. So we're up to 11.9, <coughs> is the Strategic Financial Report for the month of June, CEO. I'll be very quick, uh, Your Worship. So we're working through our end of year financials now. Um, the Director's promised me that we'll be around about that half million <coughs> deficit. I'm not sure she's been sick for the last couple of days. I'm not sure she's seen the numbers that I haven't seen yet uh, because of that. But uh, yeah, we're just working through our end of five years financials. So it's for the end of the year, we'll, we'll know shortly. Okay, questions? Any questions? Councillor Walker, are you questions, uh, Councillor yeah, Walker? Yes, yes. a question on page 193. Mm -hmm. the, um, the actual amount, this is the very bottom line cash and cash equivalents. Yes. Um, just an explanation on that variance there between the actual and the budgets previous to that. Um, cash and cash equivalents? Yeah, at the, the, end the of 80 period. million. At the end of the period, the 80 million. As yeah. compared to the 160 odd budget. Ah, uh, see, yeah. Director? Um, yeah, when we prepare the budget, um, we include cash and investments in one line. Um, during the year, we have two deposits, on, right. and they get separated out in the actuals for cash flow. So this year, um, at the actuals at the end of June, we had 40 million on term deposit. So that shows up on a different line in the balance sheet, but we don't separate when we do the budget. Right, okay. In summary, so the yeah. budget's set without a differentiation of what's in term deposits, and then yeah. as the year we, we invest our money at different times, it's shown on a different line item. And we still went through the end of year processes to finalise. Thanks, Councillor Walker. Other questions? No other questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption, please. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Just quickly, uh, the actual financial result for 2018 19 financial year is uh, currently indicating half a million in deficit. Uh, but this is definitely a better result uh, than the adopted uh, revised budget of $1.7 million deficit back in May. Um, unfortunately, our exact uh, financial position uh, will not be realised until the 2019 audit. Uh, annual financial uh, statements is released. Um, but I would like just a uh, note on uh, you know, our council borrowings uh, have dropped by over 13 million for the year, and we've, we've still maintained 185 million in uh, cash and investments. So uh, I would like to congratulate the CEO, directors, and all staff for the diligence maintained throughout the organisation to ensure. Budgets are met or better. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. 11.10 is the Development Services Monthly Review for June C. Uh, Last one you'd like to hear from me, Your <laughs> Worship. Uh, again, the department had again a high risk area. Unfortunately, we have had an LTI in July, but for last year, uh, they went through the whole year, which is an excellent performance. And again, um, the July incident showed that we need to just keep our focus. Our Slade Point Coastal Plan was endorsed by Council in June and we've commenced two new plans for the next 12 months for St Helens and McEwen's Beach as agreed with Council. Operational works applications are tracking similar to 2018 levels um, and that one's a calendar year tracking so it's about 2018 which is higher than previous years. Uh, as many councillors know we've had a meeting of the Priority Development Area Advisory Committee both in June and July uh, and we're starting to get down to finalising around master plans and priority years and we've got a uh, a briefing with council soon to go through that. So I think um, watch this space around where we're going to focus on first in the PDA. Uh, the Morani Precinct Master Plan is nearing completion. We've actually got a briefing on that with councils next week. The mountain bike project we're talking to you about this afternoon, that's all on track in the feasibility stage. Uh, and again, that's all tracking well uh, for a decision in September about whether we move forward into detailed design. Um, but it's all tracking well so far. 
And I'll just make a note, the Serena Sugar Shed exceeded all sales and visitation targets for the year and stayed around budget. So that's a great outcome. Thanks very much, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Councillor England. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, electronic page 205, monthly safety review. With regards to the whippersnipper stone that picked up on a passing vehicle, do we have an overarching um, like risk assessment on that sort of stuff, or does it have to be an on-site job-by-job -job risk assessment? I imagine if you had to stop the whippersnipper every time a car was coming, you'd get nothing done. So yeah, yeah, no good question, Councillor. So with slashes and that, we definitely have a a different process uh, with the risk associated. Whippersnipping, there is a risk assessment done on a site-by-site -site basis, but um, we'll find that it's very, very difficult. You could be 40 metres away from the side of the road and, the, and something would still flick up. So um, I, I wouldn't say we're having a lot of those now. Um, we have improved our risk assessment, but you're right, we also want to make sure our people have to stop every time. So you'll notice that we do a lot of that, um, that some of those works in the high-risk areas on Saturdays and things when the traffic's lower uh, to try to minimise those risks. Obviously, that's a cost as well, um, but we can t continue to refine that risk assessment process. I'm going to say we get a lot of uh, cracks in windscreens from our vehicles and so on. That's not from whippersnippers. I haven't seen too many of the whippersnipper ones coming up, or those ones more regularly now as we've refined our processes. Another one, Council Angle. On the same page, the, I imagine the um, the fire extinguisher was not ours. It was sub just simply discarded. Um, so is that something like that just do damage to the blades or damage to the mechanism as well? So yeah. yeah I'm not sure in this particular case I'd have to check for you, Councillor. Um, yeah, it can do a little bit of both. You might be lucky. It's on the side, just does a little bit and then otherwise it could be in the wrong spot and can do some significant damage. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we're out of that now. You'll see that the, the, the region's looking very good. We've got on top of the grass, but we had a period there where late in the year we're we put on extra staff during the summer months and then it didn't rain, so the grass wasn't growing. And then as soon as we probably go and think it's quietening down, we had that rain in the grass. So when the grass gets a bit longer, that's where we're hitting. We tend to find discarded stuff and you don't know until you've hit it. So that's just how it goes through our processes. And another one, Councillor. Yeah, same page again, Your Worship. I, I, I find it interesting, um, the uh, incident involving a contractor, verbal abuse by a member of the public. Um, how does the CEO... I mean, apart from the actual incident, how, how does the CEO deal with, is there follow-on from that um, in, this, in this particular incident? CEO. Yeah, thank you. Very good question. It's been touched on. I think that's something we've got a lot better on. So our employees obviously get offered uh, support through our uh, Griffin and other, and we always have follow-up, but we treat our contractors like that as well. We offer that service. If the organisation or the contractor has that service in place for their employees, we'll encourage that contractor to use that. But we also open up ours ours as well to make sure that while it might have been a one-off incident that the, the person who was uh, in that position was is okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we've had an incident which hasn't been reported yet, which I think is probably going to be a lost time injury for June for one of our parks contractors who was on a beach and actually got robbed. Um, and uh, two, two of the staff took the phone, it was a bit of abuse, um, and the person was fine, we've offered support for both regularly and then a couple of weeks later the individual's not feeling so confident so we're working through that. But it just sort of shows that, and I think it was mentioned before, there's a lot of roles in council that are on the front line that cop um, you know, a fair tirade at times. So it's something we're working really hard on the wellbeing space, so it's not just about safety and whether you hurt yourself, it's about the mental anguish. We've done a lot of work in this space and we've invested heavily in the people and culture team here. And, and that's part of it. It's not just the all the, the, the shiny stuff on development. It's about how do we look after our people well as well. So it's something we've worked really hard on. I think we're in a pretty good space on our support network. Um, I know our governance team follows up on a regular basis through our rehabilitation coordinator. So there's no physical injury. We follow up on a regular basis to make sure people are okay. Thanks, CEO. Further questions? Councillor Walker. Thank you. Uh, is the review of the facilitating development policy, is that still coming to council in November? Is that the projections? So, uh, yes. Excellent question, Councillor Walker. Um, we spoke about it, the director and I. Uh, that's what we promised to do. Uh, we probably need to just have a chat with councillors. Do they still want to do that coming into an election or so? But um, that's what we committed to doing. Uh, so we probably need to sort that out, whether we are, we are or we aren't. Um, that's what we did commit to, it was November. Um, we did I ask we did talk about the director and I about whether we just need to check with council they still want to do that or not. So we need to sort that out. We can sort that out, don't you? Okay. Further questions? Councillor Payton. Uh, just uh, one question for you. <coughs> just on page 
these two are set uh, operationally operating results. Uh, the, I just note there we've got a red uh, status for the economic <coughs> development in tourism uh, around the budget. Uh, they've gone up by about 370,000. There's not actually an explanation on that one, I don't think. So, yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you, Councillor Payton. I'm sure what happened, I put some words in there and it hasn't come across, so I apologise. I don't know what's happened there. I actually gave some changed words and they're not in there. Um, so I deliberately made sure there was a comment in that. So what we did there on my approval was there was some forward events um, decisions that were made that you you actually paid for in our invest in, in strategy. And it was really, we, we, we paid them this year on the basis that the overall business was tracking okay um, and they were due for, so it's a liability. So we made that decision, I made that decision to do that. And that's what the actual explanation said that hasn't made it for some reason. So I apologise, I did put the words in in my handwritten notes, so I'm not sure what's gone on there, so I apologise, but that's what it was. Further questions, Councillor Anglet. Thank you, Worship. Um, with regards to the sugar shed, you know, it's great to see exceeding ticket sales and, and and sales of product, um, but as you mentioned, around about budget, uh, we've been tracking a bit behind. Is, are we closer now because of the increased sales? And is that it? so? We would have, you know, we've been tracking a little bit behind for some time. Um, so, it, do we have a long term projection for the possibly a a better to budget scenario? So, yeah. yeah, thank you, Councillor Ingrid. So. In my, uh, in my monthly report, KPI is the one that's read is the review of the Serena Sugar Share, not the operations, the strategy, and, it's, uh, and I, I just, it, I haven't done what I was supposed to do, so it's my fault. Um, so what we actually have done, and we did a trend, I'm happy to send it out again over the last five or six years, so the actual total cost to run has actually been coming down, and the net difference between revenue and costs has been coming down generally. So if you look in the table there, the actual budget, so revenue's up, but costs are up. Uh, and that's not uncommon in our business that we monitor as we move through on any department. If your revenue's up, but some of that revenue incurs costs. Um, so if you've got more people coming through, you might have more staff hours or more consumables you need to do. That's not uncommon. Um, so the total budget net, the two numbers are different than the budget, but the differential's very close to being the same. I think it's within five or $10,000 from memory. So they've actually met pretty well close to what they said as we track through. Um, I think that the key that you're asking is the strategy on, I think we're at a level now of um, visitation and costs where we're probably on the limit of, I'm not sure what else we can do. It's around that strategic review that I haven't done yet, that I was supposed to have done. Okay, Councillor Bella. Um, more a comment than a question, but with regard to the sugar shed, um, one thing that may have a bearing on what's going on is for a considerable period of, period of time now, um, the um, tourist information centre down there is quite literally chock-a-block. Um, RVs parked in there um, on a number of occasions that I've been there, there's been no space available. So uh, to be honest, the provision of that, I think has had a, a bearing generally and it's probably something that we shouldn't just leave behind. If we're starting to get more people and more of a reputation for stopping there, we are going to have to look at First of all, what benefit are they bringing? And secondly, do we make provisions for further people that want to stop at those same peak times? It's part of the review process. Councillor Bonaventura. Yeah, and that will also follow on from Councillor Bella. Your review, obviously, your worship, uh, or CEO will indicate uh, possible options or strategies to take it forward yeah. into, a, into a new area. Yeah. Yeah. Looking Thank forward you. to it. Further questions? No further questions. Somebody have to move the reports adoption. Councillor Anglet moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Anglet. Thank you, Worship. As the report suggests, another busy month for development services. Uh, new development in activity includes a um, facility at Marion, which will house a uh, vet and 49 residential lots at Beaconsfield. Um, applications are down over this month, but uh, construction activity remains strong. Um, just like to make the, the note that that all of the um, all of the projects seem to be in the green at the moment, strategic planning projects all in the green, uh, best attraction and growth all in the green, um, parks, natural environment projects all in the green, um, Serena Sugar Shed, um, great sales and, and people going through there, economic development and tourism all in the green except for one little, one little tiny little orange thing around some tourism signs that will be finished uh, by the end of this month. So overall, a great report. Um, the, um, seems like it's uh, on top of everything at the moment. Thanks very much, Councillor England. Speaker against. 
Any other speakers? Oh, we only have green in our colour choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> it's only print choice. The printer doesn't print yeah. red. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> All right, so uh, no, other, no other questions. I'll put the motion then. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. We have uh, no petitions to receive today. One tender, and the tender is for the Hospital Bridge Fishing Pier. And you said you weren't going to speak again, so you have, but I've got you down to speak to this. Oh, just quickly, one point, if I may, thank you, Worship, is that um, this is you know, um, two, years <coughs> since the, two years since the cyclone. I got the tender in. Um, you all know, the only point I would like to make, there was one local who put in for a tender, but when we applied the local by policy, it still didn't make too much difference, it's still over a $300,000 gap. So the contractor that we've chosen is very experienced, uh, been through a full vetting process, so a very exciting project to get on with, and now that uh, hopefully they're endorsed today and we can get it all done. I think it, the construction mm. is going to be finished by December, um, all going well, so it'll be good to get it all going. Thank you very much. Uh, questions at all for the CEO? It's pretty well straightforward this one. It's good to see. Finally up and running. Somebody like to move the report's adoption? Councillor Walker moves. Councillor Casey seconds. Councillor Walker. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's within budget, so uh, yeah. all good. Thank you very much. I'll put the motion then. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Fantastic. Thank you very much. There's no notified motions. There's no public participation today. Late business, councillors. Councillor Casey. And thank you, Your Worship. As part of the uh, Festival of Arts, I attended the Mackay Chamber Music Festival uh, over the weekend with uh, one of our uh, former young uh, musicians, Glenn Christensen. Him and uh, ten of his very talented young uh, musicians came up here and they had sold out concerts for the four concerts they had. And you, when you read the bios of all of those um, young musicians, they're, they're fantastic. They're Europe. America, Australia, you know, and yet they came here to Mackay and they've had their uh, second choral festival, or second chamber music festival here. Um, they also did um, master classes, which would be no good for a guy like <coughs> my musical um, talents. But uh, uh, over the uh, two days, I had uh, several master classes and they had 122 people attend those master classes, you know, comprised of students, teachers, and observers as well. Uh, and the very pleasing thing about it uh, was that. We did, uh, Rad uh, did give them a grant, but the very, very most pleasing thing is uh, that there was uh, people from Claremont, Mackay, Melbourne, Brisbane, Toowoomba and Adelaide and Sydney that all attended those, so um, it's hitting the mark. Mm. And uh, the uh, standard of the music, as I said, was excellent, and those are there enjoyed every moment of it. Thank you very much, Councillor Casey. Yeah, well said. It's a great, been a great start to the festival. Last weekend has been absolutely well attended and uh, very, very well run. All of the events, fantastic. Further uh, late business? No further late. Councillor Payton. Uh, hey, uh, I recently attended the uh, Young Lower Progress Association or ADCA uh, meeting uh, on Friday night there uh, as they had some issues around uh, you know, road, roads and that up in the younger area uh, with some some of the rain that that we'd had. Uh, prior to getting there, we, uh, council had already, uh, council officers had already uh, fixed up most of the issues there and was uh, quick to act on it. But uh, just the EDCA group uh, wanted me to relay, relay on their, their thanks uh, for the quick work and the actions that was done by council to rectify it in slippery conditions and that up there. Thank you very much, Councillor Payton. Further late business? No further late business? Councillors, um, we have uh, four items in confidential. Uh, does anybody, is anybody of a mind to close the, the meeting for consideration of those confidential items? I think they're all pretty well straightforward. Okay, so we'll move now. Councillor Walker, you've declared a conflict in which one? So, uh, 17. 18.1. Oh, yeah. Or 17.1, as it is now. Um, would you like to step out then whilst we consider that one? I don't think it'll be too long, Councillor Walkers. So, would you like to move then that we uh, propose the sale of lot four on that plan number in Serena? Moved by Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Payton. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. Be so long, 
17.2, the Engineering Commercial Infrastructure Acquisitions and Development Services Monthly Legal Report. Somebody might like to move. Councillor Englert moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.3, the approved concessions under the facilitating development policy. Somebody like to move? Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by Councillor Englert. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.4 is the approved sponsorship under the Invest with My Events and Conference Attraction Program. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you very much, councillors. That concludes the meeting today. Thank you for your attendance, and, uh, and I declare the meeting closed.